recording. Hey, thank you for uh, being here today. I'm honored to be with Steve Newton, the founder of Mission Barbecue, one of my favorite restaurants and one of the fastest growing restaurants, um, um, fast food chains. You know, Steve and his partner, Bill, were uh, thinking about their own personal mission and how to give back. And that led them to develop this uh, restaurant called Mission Barbecue. They wanted to honor veterans, uh, first responders, people in the military. And so they've been on mission and they've been um, critically thinking about their mission uh, uh, diligently as they've developed their restaurant and continued to grow it over the last uh, uh, almost a little over a decade or so. So I'm very honored to have Steve um, with us today. I just wanted to have him to come in and to share some thoughts about how he was handling the current crisis and the current situation. And so this is going to be a very um, important conversation. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping notes. I do, um, I'm going to try to put everybody on mute as much as possible. And um, 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 and then, uh, but we do have the chat available as well. So that if you uh, would have a question, you can put that into the chat box and we'll try to get to those questions in just a few minutes. I do have a couple questions that I wanted to ask Steve and I just wanted him to share his heart with uh, our group today and our team. And then, um, um, like I said, we'll have those questions towards the end of the conversation. So Steve, thank you very much for being here and, and being encouragement to business owners uh, right now. Um, uh, one of the questions, obviously, you know, this uh, virus has been impacting marketplaces and businesses all over America, and it's obviously impacted the restaurant industry. So how are you and how are you handling this crisis? What, what can, insight can you give us? Well, Ken, first of all, thanks for having us on. And um, you know, out there, congratulations on your personal and professional success. And my wish and barbecues wishes to you and your family that you're healthy and happy, especially during this time. And I got to admit, Ken, I admitted to you yesterday and today, I'm a little nervous. Um, I've, I've, I'm not ever spoken in front of CEOs before, so um, I'm just a, a, a little bit nervous. So I've got my notes ready, so keep me on, on point and, on, and certainly on task. But, you know, at Mission Barbecue, really, we started, you know, as a story of two best friends. Um, we had a, a love for barbecue, but more importantly, a love for our country. And we knew that our mission from the very beginning, that our mission was to serve. And so during this time, we couldn't be more proud of the 4,000 teammates that we have and all that they're doing to take care of our people. And you know, we, we're trying to really focus on not what we don't have, but what we do have. And we know we are very blessed and that a lot of folks out there are, are struggling and stressed a lot more than we are. So we're trying to focus on what, um, what we do have and not what we don't have. And uh, since the very beginning, Bill and I got together and we knew that because our mission is to serve, that we needed to take care of our people and that we need to walk our talk. You know, we've been in business nearly nine years and, and that's been our mission. And uh, so it's in times like these that, that uh, we just felt it was important that we do our very best to step forward. Uh, I love it. And, I, you know, you and I have talked about uh, the love that you have for your team and your people. And um, actually in the book, uh, Well Done, which you uh, have been very supportive of, we actually talk about your team huddles every day that you get the team together and you know you talk to them about priorities. I, I know you care for each team member and that's probably been one of the biggest uh, struggles from a business owner and CEO. You know, we care for our teams. How, how, how have you guys approached or how have you specifically approached loving on your team right now and, and what's the messages that you're communicating uh, to them as they go through this crisis? Uh, well, Ken, I got to apologize. I know it took me a long time. I'm a slow reader to go through your book. So I uh, very, feel very honored that you had us in, in part of that. But, you know, part of us, as far as serving our people, our teammates, our customers, our community, our country, is taking care of our people. And for us, we, we kind of do it specifically in two ways with our teammates, and that's celebrating their successes and supporting their struggles. And now during this time, you know, we decided, Bill and I decided it was really important to us to protect our teammates. Mm -hmm. And so we went into this probably not um, 
not with a financial bend, but more of a bend to take care of our people. And so we made a commitment for three weeks that there'd be no layoffs and that everyone would work um, what they needed to work when they, what they wanted to work. Um, and then, you know, over this last week, um, there has been some contractions and, um, but it's inspiring to see what our teammates have done for, from hours sharing to some folks have just donated their hours to others. Uh, it's been really inspiring and I'm, I'm, I'm really proud. We, we really wanted to say that we would provide no layoffs and I'm, I'm really proud to say that we have 97.5% of our, of our team still on the schedule um, if, they, if they choose to work. Wow. Uh, so we'll see how much longer we can continue that. And I, I think the government has, um, has really stepped up and it looks like we might have some relief for at least our industry. And I know a lot of, a lot of you guys out there are stressed and struggling and, um, and in need of support. So, and I hope that comes for you and, and what, in your labor of love. Well, you know, I, I'm just so proud of, of you course, guys. I mean, you about communication too? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Ken, you asked about communication. Too? Yeah. What are you telling your team right now? I mean, besides the no layoffs. Yeah. So we, yeah, so we have daily meetings in our restaurants twice a day. Uh, we have an all hands on deck conference call uh, once a week. And uh, now we're down to now three times a week with our managers and our senior leaders. But, you know, really the message for us has been emails, um, some gifts, uh, reaching out for support. We have some, some resources that we were able to provide for comfort and support emotionally um, and also, you know, financially, financially and physically. So that was important for us. And overall, we, we have, it was important for us to communicate frequently and to communicate a message of hope that, you know, um, nobody wanted this to happen and everybody wishes it could stop right now. However, um, we're going to get through this and we're going to get through this together. And, um, and I think that one thing we've seen in our industry, and I'm sure everyone else's, is that through tornadoes or hurricanes or, you know, um, some tragedies in our restaurants, that those restaurants, they come through it and their team is stronger. And we're, we're communicating that that's going to happen. And, and, and we're uh, trying to communicate a message of hope and that we will get through this, but we have to do it together. I love it. I love it. I'll tell you one of the things that impresses me. I'm, I'm impressed so much by your organization and what you guys have built from just um, seriously. And I don't, I don't say that flippantly. I, I, I'm hard on business, right? Cause I, I want them to, you know, it's a, it's a statement in the marketplace and uh, just how they go, you know, I want to see that there's something behind something of substance behind the business itself. But Every time I've been in one of your restaurants, which has been a lot, quite honestly, because it's one of my favorite places, is uh, I see the love that the team has, and I see how engaged they are. I see that it's it's different. It it feels different. They treat people differently, and I know that that's just something that's really important um, uh, uh, to you. And so I just and and even just I want to just uh, give you. Uh, Praise again. I mean, the fact that 97% of your workforce right, right now um, hasn't been laid off. And, you know, ultimately in business, we have to make some of those tough decisions from time to time as we look at keeping the business afloat. But the fact that your team members, if they get laid off now, even in the future, they know, I mean, you can see the unemployment numbers that are out there, the number of businesses that went to that as their first response. The fact that you guys have done other things first and you said, hey, we want to keep the team together, that sends such a valuable message to your team. I'm just so proud of what you're doing. Well, you know, Ken, our, our brand is a very collaborative brand um, and we're, we're, we're a work in progress too. Um, culturally, we're a work in progress. But you, when, when for eight years we tell people that we want to be a great people first, company and culture. We want to be beloved. That's one of our goals is to be beloved for our teammates. And we talk of our people celebrating their success and, you know, supporting their struggles. So then in a time of, of trouble, um, you know, we, we just, we were, we were convicted that we had to walk our, walk our talk. And, um, and, and we, we've been blessed, you know, with the, with the teammates that have all come together and, 
they've, they've made sacrifices and struggles and, and um, you know, we're, we're, we're very thankful. Right. Well, you know, one of the things, just real quick on this, I, now I believe in the value of the golden rule, right, which is treat other people as we want to be treated. And, you know, sometimes we, you have to make tough decisions, but if you do it in a way that's thoughtful, if you do it in a way that, that shows people that you've shown a level of consideration, that, you know, just as you'd want, if you were in that same in those same shoes and anyway, I, I just, I think you guys have done that in a tremendous way. And I'm just real proud of, um, like I said, I'm real proud of what you're doing. Hey, I know that you and I talk. Well, uh, go ahead. Yeah, good. I just can say, no, I, know that, I, I know that we've talked a little bit in, uh, during this crisis. And, and one of the things that I thought was impressive is you've talked about that the crisis, although it's difficult and it's hard and nobody would want to be here, that it has energized you a bit, that it's refocused you. Can you talk a little bit about how that, how it's re-energized you and what, what you're focused on? Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm not gonna say that we were on autopilot and I'm certainly not gonna say that, that I was coasting, uh, but our, our business has grown and we, like I said, we're just blessed to have so many people supporting us in and around our business that our business has grown to the point where, and our brand has grown to the point where it's become a, a maintenance and management centric brand and company. I mean, and we needed that from, you know, the, the early days of the wild, wild west, they, they, needed to, they needed structure and systems and standards and processes and procedures. And uh, so we needed that. And, but we, had become, we are a, 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 a management and a, um, you know, centric type brand right now um, working on, on systems and processes. So it was this time really energized me because it was a time that, uh, jolted me to realize, um, you know, hey, I, I want to step forward. I, I'm called to be a leader. I'm called to be the leader of our brand. And and people are not unlike they always have, but people are looking to 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 us mm -hmm. as leaders to say, you know, and this is going to sound parental, and I don't mean it like this, but but they look at you and they have that look in their eyes. Well, am I going to be okay? What are we going to do? You know, um. Is, am, am, I gonna, am I gonna be safe? Am I gonna have a job here? And so, um, you know, that was really important in, in, in our decision-making and, and it's really revitalized. It, it's, it's, it's really taken me up a notch. I, I find myself digging deeper and reading more about um, not only how to do things, but really how to do things you know, and how to treat people with dignity and respect and during this time. And, you know, um, I, you know, I've contacted, you know, I, I think almost every one of our, 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 our unit leaders uh, personally and thank them. And, and, um, and it's, it's those things. And I know everybody on the phone is doing that kind of stuff that it just is made it better. It's, it, it's kind of energized me because it's kind of like, give me the ball coach. This is a big game. I'm in. That's right. That's right. I, I love it. I love it. And I think that's what, you know, I say, hey, sometimes in our most difficult moments is when we're called to lead at the highest levels, right? And, uh, you know, we need our businesses to be performing. We need uh, standards and we need processes. And, and those are real critical for our success. And like you said, especially as you come up from a startup, you know, where things are, you're trying to, you know, you build it a little bit, but you're building it on the go. But uh, yeah. this... Uh, this pivot's been good. I think it's a it's good for you to to focus on. So you've been focused on the team. You've been focused on kind of how you're leading into that and how you're helping them during difficult times. I love the personal growth of that as well. I I know that it's good to lead, uh, and you know one of the principles that I talk a lot about is that we can improve our organization when we improve our team, right? And so finding the right people to have with us. And I know you guys work so hard at good and good team members, good uh, employees, good, good people that are there, good unit leaders like you were talking about. Can you give us one of your secrets, if you will? How do you find good people to add to your team? What are you looking for? Well, we're always looking for, for great people, right? Everybody's always looking for great people. And most of our people come from friends, you know, and, and family members and and referrals of people they, they work with. And, you know, this, this too has been a, a work in progress. You know, we, 
Of course, everybody's got job descriptions. We've refined them. Then we came up with three key characteristics inspired by a lot of what Gallup has talked about in, in regards to um, finding your strength and allowing people to, to, to grow and bloom in their strengths. And um, so we, we came up with three key for each role. Um, and then, you know, we, we have a, a rigorous selection process that includes screening, assessments, on the job, um, job previews, peer-to-peer -peer interviews, uh, some pre-orientation type things um, that kind of help us select the right, like, right person. We, we really believe that we want to try to hire attitude and we'll, we'll, and we'll, train, we'll train the skill. And, and, and we're not perfect either. We've, you know, uh, we've, we've stubbed our toe a fair amount like, like anybody else also. But uh, it's the people's number one. I, I learned that a long time ago. Um, in, in our industry, we're a very high touch industry and not a very high tech industry. And, um, you know, the people is, is the most, is, you know, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing, I think Stephen Covey once said. Yeah. And um, our main thing is, is our people. Right. I love it. I love it. Are you thinking, just a, this is a, just a thought, I mean, I, I know you kept 97% of the employees, but I mean, are you thinking about recruitment now? Or are you, is that an area that you're trying to figure out? You know, how do we go get yeah, something? Because, right, because everybody on the call here, I mean, it's the, the, the vision that you guys have when you run your, your company and your culture is not, is not today, it's not this week. I mean, financially, we all have those cash flow things that, we have to manage, but um, you know, we're all right. We're everybody on the phone's thinking, okay, um, what's out there. I mean, what's next, what's next, next, next quarter, what's next half the year, what's next year, what's the next decade look like for our, our brand and our company and our culture. So yeah, we're, we're still active, actively recruiting. If not, if anything, um, you're probably going to see, well, you're going to see a, a little bit of a full court press from us on, um, Hey, we're still looking for, you know, it's that Marine Corps. We're looking for a few good men and women. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> Is there one characteristic from an attitude? I know you talked about attitude. I'm just Let me just say, you know, I mean, the, the magnitude of having 4,000 teammates and you have 97 or 97.5% of them, that means we laid off 100 people. Yeah. And just the weight and the magnitude of that um, is daunting, as it is for everybody that's had to lay off anybody. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but they will be the first ones offered back before we, um, before we hire anyone else from, you know, from the outside. But, you know, we hope to get back into a, into a substantial, into, into a uh, scalable growth mode that we were, we were back in. Uh, some of our resources are now have been allocated to taking care of our team. So the, the ramp will, might be a little bit slower, but, and that means we'll need more people. Right. So, yeah, I want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you about your growth mode because you guys have been fast growing. But real quick on the attitude piece, um, I love that you look for attitude when you're hiring people. Is there, is there a way that you can identify or have you guys figured out, how, besides just the interaction, is there, I mean, is there some, something specific pertaining to attitude that you're looking for? Is it friendliness or is there something more? Um, well, you know, there's, gosh, that's a, that's a fabric of things in there. But, um, you know, in our interview process, I've read once that, that uh, Southwest Airlines would, would fly their pilots down to Dallas to meet with a team. And they would have a driver come pick the, the, the person up and they would know what flight that person was on. And they would see how the, how the flight attendants how they how that pilot dealt with the flight attendants and how the how the pilot would interact with the uh, with the driver and how that that pilot or that potential teammate would interact with the receptionist or the person that was greeting them and um, so we do some of those things we take every kind of take people through different processes and different scenes and after a while you get to know uh, you get to better know um, more than just one interview one snip at a time. I mean, even I can look good in a, in a tie, you know, and, and I've got some scripted answers too. So even I can do that. I think it all comes out. I think another one that's been very, very um, impactful over the last two years is we worked a, a little bit with the table group, Pat Lencioni's group. And um, we've kind of integrated the humble, hungry, and smart um, 
characteristics and and the interview modules in uh, in our both our hourly and our salaried service heart leaders selection process. And that's been that's been very helpful too. To, to they're, they're not typical interview questions, and they uh, they they seem to provide a little bit of information to get to know the person a little bit better. So those are I don't know about secrets. I mean, but those are some things we we've done found some success with over the last couple of years. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, we've added peer to peer interviews. Initially, we didn't do peer to peer interviews. So we'll have a we'll have an hourly teammate uh, sit and interview a um, and I'm sure everybody else does similar things like this. We'll have an hourly teammate sit and interview um, uh, another teammate, you know, so if someone's a cook, we'll have a cook interview another cook. Mm-hmm. And then we'll come back and we always ask them, what'd you think? <laughs> you know, what'd you think? <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I love it. You know, I, I, I teach companies too. the, um, uh, not quite the humble, hungry and, um, that Pat, Pat Liancy does, but, you know, second Timothy two, two, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, Hey, find reliable and trustworthy men that can teach what, what we've taught you. And I think those two attitudes, right. Reliability and trust, I call it trustability. You know, trustability is not a word. I had to create that word, <laughs> but boy, yeah. isn't it? I'll be yeah. right it. <laughs> but in, aren't those powerful attitudes? I that's your third book, Ken. <laughs> we'll work. Up, we'll work on it. We'll see. Hey, I know uh, when you started Mission Barbecue and even the name around Mission, that the it was all about your why. It was a way for you guys to serve. It was really about honoring, um, like I said, first responders and military and people who serve. Tell me, can you tell a little bit of the story of how? how that became so evident to you and, and then how that why has kept you focused over the last decade? Yeah. So, um, I had an opportunity to, to grow up in this business, um, worked with a, a giant, uh, role model to many in the industry named Norman Brinker and Norman started steak and ale. I worked with him at Bennigan's. He, of course, Chili's and later Brinker International. And from that, you know, I got to work with Chris Sullivan, Bob Basham, and Tom Dakotas um, in the in the early formation of Outback. I, I I got to sit at the feet of those folks and learn um, and learn the and I saw both with Mr. Brinker, Chris, Bob, and Tom the importance of culture. And so, you know, from that, um, you know, it was important for us to come up with. It became clear it was important for us to come up with our our field guide, which defines you know our, our culture and and part of that, like I talked about, was taking care of people. And, and one of the things that's in our field guide is, is our, is our why. And it was, it was um, kind of before Simon Sinek hit it really hot, really hot, but you know, our mission and our mission is to serve and, you know, expressing our why with a selfless servant's heart as we embodying our values of passion, respect, integrity, dedication, and excellence while we execute our business model, of great people producing great food, providing great service, earning great results and great rewards. As we try to one day establish our goal, and that's to be the most beloved brand in America in the restaurant industry that leaves a legacy that lasts lifetime. So that's just a summary of kind of the, the, the chapters in, in that field guide. And so we always had, um, you know, what our why was, and it was, it was inspired uh, by taking care of our people our teammates, our customers, our community, and our country. Mm, I love it. You know, you do a great job too in every one of your restaurants, having that why prominent right by the condiment area or people can come in and they can see exactly why you guys exist and what you're trying to accomplish. I think that's, that's powerful. Have you had to go back and revisit that multiple times or do you find yourself kind of at times getting maybe off in a different direction to say, hey, I gotta get back to this why or this purpose or oh, oh yeah i mean the 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 the, the busyness of, of of life and work right uh, it takes us to to things that are that are urgent right now and uh, i know we've all read that about you know urgent and important quadrant one type things but so we put into place some things that we think are real important for us to to remind ourselves so every day we'll read from our field guide we read from our field guide twice a day um, and you know, in all of our restaurants and, we, you know, we'll carve it up over a 30 day period and we'll read part of that um, every day, twice a day uh, in, in all of our restaurants. We start all of our meetings um, with, um, 
with a part of the field guide also. Um, and we, I, I read uh, through some Gallup research that nearly 70% of work in an organization, don't, they don't know what that organization's um, goals are, what their mission is, what their vision is. And, and so, and, and I said, gosh, that can't be us. You know, um, our, our, our mission has to come from the heart because we, we can't be pretenders, you know, when the national anthem plays every day, you know, we can't just go through the motions. It has to be emotional. So we remind ourselves frequently through uh, daily readings. Um, we recertify everybody once a year on the field guide and including our, our hourly teammates once a year. Uh, we start every meeting off that way. And then um, we also have thematic, we meet quarterly with what we call task forces that um, make up a, um, one will be a cert. We have a servant's heart leader, board of directors that we meet and uh, we'll go through the field guide, make sure it's pertinent. Where are our gaps? And we have them, you know, we, we have them and we have to attend to them. So, um, you know, we, we try to, we try to intertwine the field guide uh, uh, multiple times a day because it's it just, it's our compass. Yeah, I love it. Have, have, I just, I'm curious, have you had to rewrite any parts of it or is it, I mean, has it been pretty much the same from the. Oh yeah. I mean, um, you know, uh, you know, thank goodness, you know, I, I you know, uh, thank goodness it's not written in, it wasn't written in stone. Uh, so it, I, we look at it as more of a constitution that heck that we can amend. Um, you yeah, know, we've made several amendments to it. We work with, um, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey, which is just uh, just a just a true gentleman, and he uh, he shared with us a story about make it matter about what he would do when when under his command when he had casualties out in the field in Afghanistan and Iraq, and uh, he would shake every every member of that person's unit's hand and he would just say simply make it matter, and so we. I've had uh, General Dempsey, a, a confidant of ours, and has spoken to our leadership team um, multiple times. And so that make it matter, we ask permission for us to use that in our field guide. And on our weekly calls, we start our calls with reading from the field guide. And then we also start our calls with asking anyone out there, the hundreds of people that might be on the call, are there any, sto are there any make it matter mission moments? Are there any stories that out happened out there that you need to share that that, that our teammates or that someone made it matter in someone's life. I love it. Boy, wow. What a great story. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, I want to talk to you about, about the why in just a second. Um, hey, we are going to open this up for some questions in just a second. If you have some other questions that you'd like to ask Steve, he's been gracious to take any questions that you might have. So you can put those in the chat box or you might get your questions ready. No, I'm really <laughs> in just a minute. Hey, one of the things I love about what you guys do, talking about making it matter, is every day at noon, you you stop, you pause to play the national anthem uh, and yep. to honor our country, to honor the soldiers, to honor the flag um, that our country is based on. Can you tell me, I mean, that's a big decision for a restaurant to pause, to to have everybody stand up. I mean, that's, that's a strong statement. Uh, was there debate about that, or how did you guys come up with that uh, uh, decision? Yes, so the, begin, the, the generation of that was that uh, we, in the very beginning, before we even had a restaurant open, you know, we had philosophically written things down and come up with things. And, and so we said, we were sitting at a, at a kitchen table, we were tasting all the food like we did every Saturday morning at nine o'clock at my house. I would make all the food and we would all come over and we would taste nine different things, uh, baked beans, you know, baked beans and Starbucks, they don't go well together, but you know, you know tough job, somebody had to do it. And so, you know, this one day we kind of said, you know something, this all sounds good and it's great to believe this and that's important, but what are we going to do about it? We need to do something. And you talk about rituals mm -hmm. and the importance of rituals, Ken. Mm -hmm. And, and so this started off by, Really, our uh, Rosemary Kraus, our our founder's wife, said we should play the play the anthem at noon every day. Uh, there are some country radio stations that do it, and we should do it in our restaurants. And we should do it as a reminder for us, for the teammates at Mission Barbecue, um, that uh, yeah, we want to honor what that flag represents and the men and women that have 
raised their right hand and sworn to protect, serve, and save the colors of that flag and the freedoms of our country. And so we did that for us, for us to remind us every day that that's what we're, that's, that, that's one of the reasons we're working here. No, I love it. And of course, and people, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've cried and you see teammates crying and you see customers crying, you know, the spirit, the American spirit is strong as steel and I'm encouraged every day at the national anthem around the country in all of our restaurants. I love it. I love it. You know, I have such appreciation. Yeah, we, we stand. For I know, <laughs> you know, I appreciate um, one of the things I've been so moved by with you guys too, even through this virus is um, I'm seeing, because I'm pretty connected to, to you and to the restaurants and all that, but you know, that you guys are still on mission, that uh, you're still playing the national anthem, you're still gathering the, to salute the flag, and, and, and that's actually been part of one of your, or some of your uh, uh, messages out there, that hey, we're still on mission, we're still, we're still doing, you know, honoring the flag, so we can't serve people like we have been doing, but we can still honor the flag. And I just love it, I think that's so fantastic. Well, we're on mission at 12 noon every day to play the national anthem for all the reasons we talked about. But we've also doubled down our efforts of supporting and feeding uh, first responders, police officers, and firefighters. You know, they're, they're uh, um, you know, the, the boy, our healthcare professionals, they're on the front lines. And, you know, thoughts and prayers go out, go out to them, right? My daughter's a nurse. So, um, you know, man, they're, they're on the front lines right now. But the police, the firefighters, the first responders, you know, with accidents, unfortunately, suicides, domestic violence on the rise, um, you know, they, they're out there working really tough shifts, too. So we've doubled down our efforts and making sure we continue to feed them, donate food to them, um, you know, once, three times a week. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, I, I'll send you a uh... One of the, I wrote an article several years ago on uh, what the American flag teaches us about leadership. My, my father was a, a great patriot. He's now passed. But one of the first things he taught me when I was a young boy, uh, probably about five or six, is one of the very first things I learned in life is how to treat the American flag. And, <laughs> and I'm not joking. I mean, that was, that was a real deal. He taught me how to, how to hang it. He taught me how to take it down. He taught me how to fold it, how to put it away. And uh, so anyway, I think there's a lot of good leadership lessons just in the flag itself. But uh, so I appreciate that you guys are honoring it every every single day. Hey, real quick, um, just another thought I uh, had. You guys were the fastest growing fast food chain out there in recent years. You guys had a great growth model. Um, I know you put a lot of resources thinking about where you were going to grow. You were just opening uh, restaurants, right, you know, the last few weeks, even before uh, everything hit. How, how has this impacted the growth plan and how much shifting have you, as you guys think about now coming out of this or, you know, tell me what the future looks like and what you guys have done on the back end just to think about those expectations that maybe you set for yourself as you thought about, hey, we're going to grow this and grow in these areas over the next couple of years. Well, um, you know, Bill and I, we don't need to open up a, another restaurant. You know, we don't need to open up a single other one. We want to, though, because we really want to go across the country and protect, honor, and serve, you know, those men and women that put the uniform on. And, and also our, our teammates, our customers, our community, our country. We want to serve them. You know, I started off in this business. I'm a college dropout, worked, worked in the restaurant business, and just, you know, just uh, couldn't find another job, I guess. So I just stuck around and ended up working my way up. And it's a great industry to be in. It's one of the industries that it's one of the one of the fastest industries that it's, that it, it's that someone without a college degree can make a six figure income. And so I'm proud of that. And it's a um, it, it's a great industry to teach uh, fundamental skills for young for young men and young women. So so I'm I'm proud of that. And that's important for us um, to continue that growth is to and to provide that development for the young men and young women personally and professionally. So that being said, that we don't need to open up another restaurant, but we want to. We've, we've at this time, pressed pause on, on development, but we didn't press stop. We pressed pause on development. A lot of our resources that we had um, set aside for that development is now set aside to, um, 
to take care of our people, quite frankly, and to see where we, as we, we're, we're not out of this, we still have some navigation to do through this and to see where we, where we fall on that. At that point, I, I, I'm hoping and praying it's not going to be stop. It's going to be, we're going to hit the pause button and it will probably be a little slower ramp up um, as it has been. We were, we were opening about, uh, about 15 to 20 restaurants a year for the last four to five years. And, um, you know, and, and kind of working our way up and down the East Coast and a little bit West, but all still um, East of the Mississippi. And we hope to continue that, that development that we, you know, we have um, probably 10 more, 15 more leases that have been signed that we're committed to. So we have the resources, we'll continue with that. And, um, and then we uh, will we'll kind of, as we navigate this, we'll see where we are, um, you know, you know, what's, what do we look like at, uh, as we get through this, that will determine where we go forward. But we want to continue our expansion, continue to serve our people. Well, communities need you to, quite honestly. They need places like Mission Barbecue. And I mean, I just think it's the best thing ever. So I want it to be in every city across. <laughs> That's my personal uh, uh, plug for you to keep going because, you know, just the food's great. Um, the, the teams are, the, you know, friendly and nice. It's a wonderful place to just go and be. And, and also, obviously, the mission's really critical for you. Hey, I had another real quick question. And, uh, uh, and then I've, I've got two questions. I'll turn it over to the team. But, um, you know, you, you are partners with Bill. I work with a lot of partners that are in business. And, and partnerships can be wonderful. They can be a wonderful blessing. They can also be difficult at times because both partners, you know, have to kind of make decisions where it comes to the, to the, uh, to the business. Uh, as you think about growth in these different areas, how do you guys make decisions? If you don't mind sharing, do you divide and conquer? Do you come together and have to be in a hundred percent agreement or how have you guys found it to work specifically? Uh, well, I could tell you that, that my partner, Bill, um, you know, you could not find a, a finer person uh, his yes means yes. His no means no. Um, he is a, a great parent to his kids. He's a great partner to his wife. And um, one could not find a better professional partner to have. Um, you know, we we still do. He's we not still even make on the call. You're just all, saying that out of, of the <laughs> I said he's not even on the call. You're saying yeah. that out of love. Wow, good job. <laughs> well, you said you were going to record this, so I know he's probably going to see it. So got to say something nice about him. But he was, they were family friends before we became partners. And he's just, a, when you look up in the dictionary under nice guys, you see his picture. And, you know, his he, nice guys do finish first. We still make all important decisions collaboratively. We, we travel on all real estate deals. And, you know, if it's thumbs up and thumbs down, we don't do the deal. If it's thumbs down, thumbs down, we don't do the deal. Um, you know, if he's really, really passionate about something, then, and, and I'm passionate the, the other way, then, then typically we continue to talk until, until one of us says, okay, either, okay, go ahead and do it or, okay, don't, I'm not going to do it and vice versa, you know, for, for, for both of us. Um, you know, he's a, he's a great, uh, CEO and, I'm probably a better exo, um, so um, we've had it. You know, just I'm I'm truly blessed to have uh, a partner a partner like Bill. I mean, but we we fight too. I mean, I know I make him mad <laughs> sometimes, and he gets frustrated with me. And because this is recorded, I won't say that he's that he makes me mad. But um, you know, for 15 years we've always come together and worked together, and and partnerships are tough. You know, I've heard it said that the only ship that doesn't sail is a partnership. And so, um, but I've been blessed to, to work with Bill. Well, you guys seem to really have an admiration and respect for one another. And, and I think that's part of what makes good partnerships as well. You trust each other. You both know that you're moving in that same direction and trying to accomplish the same goals. And, you know, once you have that belief in each other, that, that solves a lot of problems in itself. Uh, but I'm proud of you guys for working together like you do. Hey, my last question uh, before I turn it over to the team, Steve, and I appreciate, again, your time today, but 
I know, you know, we've talked about faith and how faith is important to you. Can you share a little bit about how your faith has shaped um, your decision making and maybe even shaped some of how the business was founded and what you guys have done at Mission Barbecue? Sure. Uh, so I, I've, gr I've grown up Catholic and, um, you know, in my uh, early adult years, uh, I, I strayed and got a little out of, out of balance. And I'm glad that I've uh, regained this, uh, a better spiritual side of myself as a person. Um, you know, uh, we, uh, I, I believe that, that God has, has his hand on, our, our, on us and is helping us guide us and you know um it's uh, you know i pray for our team for our teammates and our leaders um and it's just uh you know it's it, it's some things that have helped me is is that you know i meet with somebody uh, usually the first friday of every month i've done that for a long time now Diff it's been two different people over the course of the last couple of decades but that's been a really good accountability session. Um, and, you know, we, we also have an, uh, what we call an anchored session that we have a monthly anchored session for our teammates mm -hmm. that, uh, it's optional if they want to join in. And we have, um, we have someone that leads that, uh, leads that for us. Um, you know, and, you know, the, the principles of business is you know, business by the book, there's a lot of good, of uh, solid foundational principles in the Bible on how to run, how to run your business, how to treat people. And so I think fundamentally and foundationally, um, God is very important to us, uh, to me. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, 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 it's anchored in our business. I love it. Thank Hey, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Hey, um, I am having a conversation with Steve Newton, the founder of Mission Barbecue, and I did get a few questions. If you've got some questions, don't hesitate to put them on the chat uh, box or um, uh, send them to me directly. Hey, one of the questions that we got, Steve, was you talked about communication with your team and how critical that was, and you outlined what the ways you've been communicating with them during the crisis. Is the question was was were you communicating that way prior to the crisis, or has you are you communicating more now since the crisis has been, um, you know, it's been impacting your organization? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that Mazda commercial from way back. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> so, um, you know. I, I think that we have communicate. We've always communicated via email, uh, via meetings, uh, twice, two meetings. Uh, we've had we have monthly leadership meetings uh, in in person. We have quarterly uh, on site uh, three day leadership meetings. Uh, we have an annual leadership conference. Um, you know, we we have uh, uh, conference calls. We've always had conference calls once a week. Um, we have in increased. The number of conference calls and because of the we're a high touch high touch industry more than a high tech industry i can tell you i'm more i'm not high tech so um but we felt it was important to to really uh adopt zoom and google hangouts meet uh to to, to put a more personable and interactive face on this because people are struggling and there's some stress out there and people are sacrificing and just being able to see other folks face, um, we found has been very helpful. And we weren't doing Zoom calls before the crisis, but that was something that may continue now, but um, was something that we did for a more personal nature, a more interactive and connected this nature during these emotional times for our people. Right. I love it. You know, you talked about the before the voice, uh, you know, you have sometimes in crisis, people are looking to the leader. And that's, that's not a, a bad thing. I actually think the voice of the leader is so critical in the life of our teammates and great leaders, you know, ones that have these vision, just like you and your partner did, you know, and we see it from companies, companies that have been in existence for a long time, they still remember 
the voice of the leader. They still remember, you know, even when the leader isn't there any longer, but they're looking to that leader to help shape decisions, to shape ideas, to feel that what they're doing is important. So, you know, I love the, the communication that you guys are doing. And I do think that that's important. People want to hear from the leader. And that doesn't mean that they can't make decisions on their own. It just means that they value the leader's opinion. They value the leader's uh, voice. So I think that's great. Hey, I got a couple more questions for you. Um, one of the questions um, about uh, growth, it says, with the change in the current business offerings to include expanded delivery options, have you cons ex uh, considered expanding into delivery via third parties once the operation's back up and running? So, yeah, so um, that's a great question. And we've, we've, um, we've watched the third party uh, DoorDash, Grubhub, Postmates, Uber Eats that are currently out there. And um, we have, um, we, we're, we're, we're doing delivery with our own people now. And at the time, right now, we think it's important uh, for us to represent our brand and to have our teammates doing those deliveries because they're our teammates. And um, boy, those, those other brands, you know, the DoorDash and the ones I mentioned, um, they've, done a, they've done an incredible job um, implementing that in the American way of life now. And um, we, you know, we'll continue the, we, we were always doing delivery but it was a, uh, it was for a hundred dollar minimum and it was a uh, free local delivery. And we've always really kind of adopted and embraced that we wanted our teammates representing our brand at the deliveries. And so, um, you know, you, you never say never, you know, you look at the critical mass of that industry, that home delivery industry um, and speaking with some professionals from some other legendary story brands that we admire tremendously. Um, you know, we're going to continue that model uh, for the foreseeable future. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I love, obviously there's some pivot. That being said, I ordered, I ordered a burrito from uh, Chipotle like last two weeks ago, something like that. And or not even two weeks ago, a week ago, but you know, I think Uber Eats delivered it. So, or no DoorDash delivered it. So, um, you know, I'm a customer though too. <laughs> but I love using your own people, right? Because you talk about, I mean, and again, it might even be a change in the business model. You don't know, right? Um, as you kind of think through this, but, you know, having, you know, that brand. Yeah, another thing we do now is we deliver food right to the car, you know, out of necessity. We always wanted our customers to come in to the restaurant. We wanted them, it was it's amazing what you might bump in to when you come into the restaurant, a, a picture that might move you and motivate you or inspire you, or you might bump into a national anthem, or you just come in and you get to smell the smoke and the food, right? And, and so we had always uh, had our, had pickup inside the restaurant. Well, now uh, our curbside pickup has uh, been a necessity and there's some real traction there. And we're going to have some internal discussions on whether when, when this passes, whether or not we continue on with, uh, with the curbside pickup. Right. Well, one of the questions I got, we got asked too is uh, what are you guys considering about on your dine in? I know we've talked a little bit about how that might change afterwards, but can you uh, give some insight on what you guys are thinking about that dining experience after this crisis? Actually, I was hoping everybody on the call could tell me what Governor Hogan and when Governor Hogan's going to lift the lift the dining thing. That's really why I'm on the call. But, uh, um, I, I guess I guess we'll, we'll we will see what happens. Uh, my I'm I'm not smart enough to predict what is going to happen. My sense tells me that um, as we've kind of eased into this with more and more um precautions um i would think the prudent thing might would be to ease the precautions back and so uh that's what we're anticipating but um hey look you know we we support all the measures that our our, our public officials are doing to keep us all safe as citizens you know we don't always like them right uh, i would prefer to to go into a restaurant and talk to people and sit down 
um, and go into and go into y'all's business and interact with people, you know. But um, you know, we respect and 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 we honor um, the laws of the land that's been put to us. So, um, and, and we'll, we 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 try our best to abide by those. Right. And I know you guys have that golden rule kind of principle. You care about your customers. So, as you guys think out, um, I'm sure you know you'll be analyzing those decisions. That's really in the customer best interest, whatever, whatever that means from the in dining in, uh, however that might shape or change uh, the decisions in real time as you go forward. So, I mean, you guys have yep. space in your restaurant. One of the things I've always appreciated. Yeah, one of them is great. Go ahead. I'm so just on that point, one of our commitments from day one has been sanitary and safe. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I've worked in the restaurant industry for I'm not going to tell you how many years, but uh, it's been 40 years that I've worked in the restaurant industry and nowhere I've worked has it been more stringent. Uh, we've implemented more stringent training, accountability. Um, now, I haven't worked at some of these giants that I'm sure are on the leading edge also, but we, one of our commitments is sanitary and safe for our people, our teammates, our customers, our community, our country. Mm -hmm. I love it. Hey, um, Doug Hillmuth, who is one of our one of the guys that I work with, who owns Hillmuth Automotive, uh, which is in several, yeah, sure. you know, several spots. Uh, he talked about uh, was you know he loves the rituals that you guys have, and he understands the value of rituals. Um, can you can you talk about a few more rituals that you guys have uh, instituted in your in the organization, or there you know that you found to be helpful kind of boundaries or patterns or habits that have set you guys up for success? Um, so I think, gosh, that's a great question. You know, um, you know, within the, uh, um, within the playbook of what we do and when we do what we do, uh, there's almost like chapters. And so like one of them we call uh, the daily huddle up which we talk about, we do it twice a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. And uh, in that huddle up, we will celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. And so, um, you know, somebody's birthday, we bring them a, a cake or cupcakes, you know, or uh, fruit or something like that. And, you know, on the day that they're working and we, and we, and we tell everybody the whole month that, that, that their birthday was in the month of April. Um, another thing we do that's um, been really helpful and, you know, uh, you know, th that old quote that the, those that seem most creative just hide their sources the best. <laughs> so the source of this came from uh, actually Ritz Carlton. And so at Ritz Carlton, what they do is when somewhere in the hotel, when there's a compliment by a, by a guest, they share that compliment with everybody with housekeeping, maintenance, laundry, bartenders, cooks, uh, bartenders, servers, front desk people. And so we adopted that from Hort Schultz's um, process that every day we have what we call a great service star of the day. And twice a day, um, we read a compliment about a teammate. So we got a compliment about a teammate, Ken, and the customer said, Ken was fantastic. I uh, was a first, cu first time customer and he came around the counter and walked me through the menu or, you know, I had my kids here and, and, and Ken helped me, with, helped me carry the food to the table. Well, that email gets sent in and we assemble them and we send them to all of our restaurants. And twice a day, uh, Ken Gosnell is the great service star of the day today. And we share that with, with everybody. Of course, they get they get a little star pin uh, from Bill and I that they get to wear on their on their on their uniform and some other things we do is you know once you cert, reach a certain milestone we have a wooden plaque engraved for you and it goes on the register and it'll say you know Ken um, Ken's hometown and Ken's an aspiring firefighter you know serving since a certain amount of time where he's a designated trainer. And we put that out there for our customers to see that. So that, and it's amazing. Our customers are just, we're so blessed. Our customers will interact with, with our teammates and say, oh, you wanna be a firefighter or congratulations. 
you know, or, hey, Ken, how are you today? Uh, and it makes it much more personable and we're hoping much more rewarding for our customers. Yeah, but also our teammates. I so I got, I can go on and on. Um, awards every, uh, we have manager summits once a year, which are different than our Servants Heart Leadership Conference. So we bring all of our managers together um, and, and we do a two day immerse, immersion of training and, um, and then have us, of course, having some fun too. So um, we have a whole calendar, of course, of, of things that, that is our, we have that strategy, which is to take care of our people. And then a, a, a whole calendar of tactics uh, by, by month, by, heck, by day, week, month, and year. Excellent. Hey, I'm getting a ton so of questions. Those are some other ones. And, and I know I, we're, I'm getting a ton of questions, and I know we're almost out of time, but a couple other quick questions. Um, one of the questions was, uh, what was your greatest challenge in creating your culture, and how long do, would you say it took to kind of get to the place that you were happy with what the culture was? Um, so the biggest challenge is, is people. And the biggest challenge is the guy staring in the mirror in the morning when I'm shaving. He's, he's the biggest challenge <laughs> to make sure that he lives, walks the talk. Um, and I can tell you, I'm, I'm still not um, content with where our culture is and our company. I'm very proud. I'm very proud of our people. And, um, and I wake up every day to go to work for them. My mission is to serve, it's to serve them. Right. And um, I'm very proud of it. We still have work to do and we will do that work. Uh, so um, we have improvements to make and we'll make those improvements and, 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 and hopefully we'll continue to get even, even better. The biggest challenges are, are the people. And, uh, but in the beginning it was almost easier to some degree because it was Bill and me and Paul and, right. and, and, and we all knew each other. We were all kind of like-minded. Um, if, if anything, you know, now you, we got to go, we have to go communicate our culture con consistently and continually. Yeah. I got a comment I wanted to share. I hope that answers it. Yeah. I got a comment real quick. I wanted to share. Uh, Denise said, it's refreshing to see such a true brand and its faithfulness to their mission and people living it every day. This is, this ultimately says what the deal about who they truly are. And I just, I love that comment. Another question I had um, real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The real quick, another question is, um, was asked about the burdens of the leader and we know that this is a difficult time. So have you found some personal strategies when you're carrying extra burden of how do you stay emotionally whole, physically whole, mentally, emo spiritually whole during those times? Um, so, yeah, so for me, um, as I'm sure all the CEOs on here, I'm just, I'm, I'm just wired to work and, and I get a lot of, and I'm and not in an unhealthy way. You know, I get great satisfaction from working and working hard. Um, I do unplug, I unplug one day a week and at Sundays and, um, you know, that's a, 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 a time of reflection, prayer, and um, it, it's my, it's, uh, we, in our family, we call it family day. And we have a family dinner. Uh, we try to have a family dinner. You know, we have adult kids. So you, you guys know what it's like getting adult kids together all at once <laughs> un, under the roof. Um, and some of us are there now, right? Um, but we have family dinner. Um, you know, you know I, I have a place in my office that, that I love to sit and just relax. Um, you know, my family, particularly my wife, is, is always great comfort to me. So, um, you know, no one supported me more than, than she has. So uh, I wish physical fitness was a little bit higher on my list. Um, but you can never trust a skinny chef, and you guys don't have to worry about that right here. Um, so, you know, you know, and of course, you know, Mass uh, Palm Sunday was well, – Sunday was Palm Sunday. And um, – you know, that's just just moving spiritually, too. And in this time of the year, it kind of helps me at least refocus and a little rebirth and uh, re-energize. Re so, um, 
that's you know I, I take my vacations with that that time is, is scheduled every year and we take a family vacation once a year and I take time off knowing that um, that cell phone battery I can't let it go I, I can't let it go uh, can't, can't let it run out I love it I love it and hey you did a good job talking about your wife and I can tell the the honesty and the sincerity that you have. I did record that, so I'll, I can clip off just that part. And you can do <laughs> that with your wife, or hopefully she can hear you. Maybe some, <laughs> get some, get some credit around it. Hey, we've got a time for just a couple quick questions. Um, um, is there um, uh, something that's been a real growth moment for you, or is there a book that's kind of changed uh, uh, your life, or is there something that you would? encourage somebody to read or something to do that would help them in their growth uh, process? Yeah, there's this book coming out. It's, it's really good. It's called Well Done. Uh, and yeah. everybody should buy a copy for everybody on their team. That was a great book. Um, Thank you for that. Oh, gosh. I mean, sure. I mean, I love, I, I, I love, tethering and anchoring leadership and life back to the truth. So um, it was great. It was a great reading. it. Um, and I have a lot of admiration for a lot of the folks that you mentioned in that book. Uh, S. Truett, Kathy being one, the founder of Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, 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 so any of Patrick Lencioni stuff is, has been good. Um, um, organizational health is probably number one for me on his deal and um, uh, the ideal team player are probably the two that have made the biggest impact mm -hmm. um, uh, anything by Gallup you know some of the Gallup books they're thick and they're dense so I got to take them in pieces mm -hmm. um, the old classics of how to win friends and influence people you know um, the seven habits of highly effective people, you know, comes back on, you know, sharpen the saw and seek first to understand, then be understood and, you know, uh, program, be the programmer and all that stuff. Um, you know, I, I tell you, Dave Ramsey's book was, was uh, entree leadership was good. I, I like to listen to his podcast, particularly he has some great guests on there. Um, gosh, what else? Um, yeah, that's, that's, you did. That, that's those the one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you for that. I can tell that you're a, you're a student. I appreciate that you continue to grow. And I loved your comment about before growing as a leader, even right now, how do I reach out to my people? How do I handle crisis? How do I, you know, and I think that's what leaders do, right? We, we pivot, we, we may know a base, but we're trying to figure out in that moment, what do I need to apply? And what do I, uh, what do I need to, to uh, implement or execute at this particular moment? And, I think you've done. And I want to tell you, thanks for the plug of the book. I appreciate that. And thank you for endorsing and supporting it. You know, uh, uh, I got to tell my team this, uh, you know, Steve, great, great. Steve and I, when we were talking back and forth, he wrote and said, hey, Ken, I, I like the book. I can't put it down. And, uh, you know, we kept responding for, I think, what, a couple months. So I, I felt very honored about that because that meant yep. you just carried the book with you for a couple months. When <laughs> I'm, I'm just a slow reader. <laughs> no, I love that. I'm just a kid from in Ohio, soybeans and cornfields. You know, I'm a slow reader. No, and you, you know, on this mission piece, I think it's so important. And that's one of the things that I love about your company. You know, you know, I mentioned in the book and one of our, the guys that I work with, uh, Tom Boyer, who runs IR Tools. Um, it's an infrared technology, does, does um, uh, patches and targets for military all over the country and, and all over the world, really, for military. Uh, pieces but you know Tom is thanks for what you do this yeah he he uh, just loves to be a blessing you know I wrote about him giving Girl Scout cookies away in the packages that they'd send to military people in the book right and but that mission is so important a mission for all of us right what mission we're on and and how we can go about it and I think that's that's probably the thing that I appreciate I mean I love the food that you guys have I mean you, it's excellent I, I love barbecue. I grew up in the Midwest. Uh, a good barbecue is hard to find. So what you guys do and the sides that you do and the desserts that you do are just amazing. But I just, and when walk, I love coming in because there is something special about 
the, your, your uh, locations. And it's unique, it's different. And, and it just makes you feel proud to be an American, proud for the, and honored for the people that have served. Um, but it just reminds, every time I even I drive by a mission barbecue, it just reminds me of, you know, not only your mission, but also my mission. It's, a, you know, it really inspires people around their purpose. And I just know, and I want to thank you for uh, your food. I want to thank you for the company that you've created because you guys have done something really significant. I've got a, uh, Tracy Stevens is one of my, oh, she works with me as well. She, she just sent me a note. She said, uh, my 14 year old daughter is fully fanning out over here. She loves Mission Barbecue. She loves the people, the culture, and the food. And, well, I can't say it any better than that, right? <laughs> hey, hey, Steve. Thank, we've taken up, thank you very much. Hey, we've taken up enough of your time. I, I, I say I appreciate you coming in today. I, I know we've taken up enough of your time. You've been a real encouragement today, and I just appreciate, uh, appreciate our friendship, but I also appreciate the words that you've spoken today. They've really been an encouragement to so many. Um, do you have any last words for us or anything else that we can take away before we, before we close? Yeah, you know, uh, Ken and everybody on the call during this uh, Holy Week, um, on behalf of you know, our family, the Mission Barbecue family, to you and yours, uh, happy Easter. And um, you know, may you uh, stay happy and healthy. I know that we're probably gonna end in a prayer, but, um, which is great. But let me also also extend to you, Ken, and everybody on this phone, um, on this Zoom call. Um, every Easter, we provide our teammates with a uh, an Easter family meal that they can take home um, for their family, for their home family. And I'd like to extend that to you and to everybody on this call. It's a pound of protein of your choice, and you know, two quarts of sides. So. Um, if, if you if you would I'll personally take care of it it's my treat for everybody out there um, thanks for the kind words and um, just email me my personal email address is Stephen s t e p h e n s like smoke newton n e w t o n at gmail.com and Ken, maybe you can send that out to the attendees if you have that available. But um, we'd like to extend our happiest Easter blessings and wishes to everybody. And also our family meal to you and your family, our Easter family meal. So thanks for having me, Ken. It's been an honor. Hey, that's, that's so gracious of you to do that. And, and I just appreciate it. And I will get that information out and, so that they can send you an email or I'll facilitated, which we'll, we'll figure it out one way so that we can get that out to the attendees that were on the call today. Hey, again, thank you for your time. I do want to pray a blessing over you and your company. And uh, um, uh, one of the questions I got real quick was, is there anything specific that we could pray for you and pray for, for your company about? I would just ask that you keep us in our prayer, in, in your prayers, our, 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 our people, our teammates, the customers of the communities that we're all in, and certainly this great country that we live in. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to pray for that. I also just real quick got another message that said, uh, we've got somebody from Canada watching and are uh, here in the Zoom, and they're saying, hey, bring Mission to Barbecue to Canada. We're waiting for you to come to uh, Canada as well. So, hey, real quick on that, we, we haven't talked about this, but do you have international? I mean, I know you're just still... Uh, kind of, you've got a lot of ground to cover here in America, but do you have that international view? Bill, I mean, Bill Krause, my partner, I mean, he's got us um, across the coast. He's got us international. He's got us on space station someplace. You know, I mean, he's, he's just a big thinker. But I'll tell you, it's because of Bill that we're, Every holiday, we're feeding troops Mission Barbecue on the front lines in Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq. And uh, so I make fun of Bill, but, um, you know, he, he's got big hopes and, and v, uh, visions and dreams. But, you know, let's, let's, get, the, let's get the West East Coast of the United States done first. <laughs> well, you know, I love America, you know, really. I mean, but that, I love the vision, right? Because 
you know, uh, I've traveled a lot internationally and to be able to go to a mission barbecue anywhere in the world might don't encourage me. <laughs> don't don't encourage me. <laughs> well, there is an order to things. You know, one of the principles I teach is know your order, work your order. So you're you're working the order of uh, here on the East Coast Coast. Hey, let me pray for you and let me pray for a blessing uh, for the team members that you serve. Let, let me pray real quick. Father, I come before you today. I thank you for, for Steve and I thank you for our friendship. Father, I thank you for their company and their organization and for the team members that serve there. Father, they have a vision of honoring those who serve. And what a, you know, that is when we talk about the heart that you have and the heart of Jesus, it doesn't get any closer than that. You came to seek and to serve. You came to seek and to save those that were lost. You wanted to serve uh, every person in the world. You cared about them, you valued them. And Jesus' ministry was filled with service as he went from town and villages to see each person. So Father, I thank you for a company that stands today and reminds us of the value of service. I thank you for um, the first responders right now. I thank you for doctors and nurses. I thank you for paramedics. I thank you for um, the military and the National Guard. Father, I pray specifically for Steve's daughter, who's a nurse. I ask that you continue to guide her and protect her at this time. Father, I pray for the team members at Mission Barbecue. I thank you that they've been so, that Steve has been so diligent to try to keep them employed in the midst of this crisis. I, I pray for a covering. I pray if somehow in some way that you can bring a cure to this, this crisis, to this virus, that can start businesses back, that no other person has to be laid off. That's, that's my prayer today. And I do pray that, that you protect um, these team, team members. Father, I also pray for Steve and Bill. I pray that as they make decisions, I pray that you give them wisdom beyond their years, help them to understand things and see things and perceive things that they couldn't see with, without your help. And so I ask a blessing, I ask favor for favor for this company, Father multiply it, grow it, uh, uh, help it to make an impact in every community that it touches. And so, Father, I lift uh, Steve up specifically to you, now, to you now. I ask that you bless him. And we thank you for this week, and we thank you for what Jesus did as he came, and, and he not only died on the cross, but on, he resurrected. And as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday this Sunday, Father, help us to realize that nothing is too difficult for you that you've raised Jesus from the dead, that you'll get us through the crisis, that you can give us wisdom and discernment. And we thank you that the things that we face in this world, that we won't have to face them in the world to come. That there'll be a day that there's no more death or crying or pain or sorrow or viruses, because those things will have passed away, but we'll be in heaven and uh, we'll be able to celebrate our time with you for, for eternity. So Father, this is our prayer today. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, Steve, thank you again. Um, I'll, be, I'll be talking to you, and uh, um, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Peace and love. All right. Take care now. Bye-bye.